faded. <laughs> Hello, boy. Uh, hello. Good evening. Did I scare you? You have nothing to fear from me. No, it's just that people prefer to avoid me. Well, I won't. I'm a doctor. My name is Rufus, sir. Rufus Kingsbury. What can you tell me about this region? It's all about staying out of trouble. But since most people prefer to avoid me, it's pretty easy. Why do people avoid you? They call me Rufus the Curse. Around here, I'm a bit of a bad luck charm. Have you ever thought about leaving? <laughs> Where else would I go? At least I know these streets and some people around here. This is my city, for better or worse. What do you do around here, Rufus? I listen to the news on the dock, sir. And I smile at those kind enough to spare me a bob. Do you have a job? It's hard to work, what with my head and all. Since I was a boy, I've always had trouble remembering what I do and why I do it. What do people say about this place? Things have been tense between the wet boot boys and the communists. They both feel they should run the dogs. Are you alone? Where is your family? I... I don't have any. My parents are dead. So you have no home? You're sleeping rough? No. I mean, yes. I live on the streets. I have no home. This city has abandoned so many of its children. It's tragic. Well, I've known worse. I'm not all alone. I have Mrs. Fishburne. She's been very kind to me. Why do you think she's so considerate? I can't say, sir. I guess she's a good soul. Sometimes it's like she replaces the mother I lost, even if we're not related. Heard anything about Sean Hampton's shelter lately? I rarely go near there, but rumour has it the place is restricted. Only members chosen by Mr. Hampton are allowed in. So long, Rufus. Be careful, take care. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Why must it always be a good evening? I was just being polite. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. Don't like questions, or doctors. And the name is Seymour Fishburne, if you must know. What can you tell me about this part of town? A shithole filled with maggots. Liars and thieves, all of them. Are you thinking about someone in particular? Nope. Hate them all. Especially these petty, whining little shitbag beggars. Is there no one who deserves your leniency then? Well, Tom from our local is somewhat of a decent bloke. At least, unlike most maggots, he knows how to listen without opening his trap. What's your occupation? I take care of my mum. It's what I do. She's the only good thing in my life. Even though I don't treat her so good. You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Sometimes it's hard to be a good son. I just want her to smile. No, I was thankful for her patience, appreciated like. God knows she deserves it. Have you heard anything recently about Sean Hampton's shelter? Called into the hullabaloo that could be heard coming from the building, I would say that all the local loonies are at his precious club. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne.
Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed, but I thought those Prewan guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor, but it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. Here is your booze. I hope it will appease your customers. Just try not to kill anyone with this poison of yours. <laughs> Believe me, Doctor, most of my customers are less agreeable when sober. Tell me about your arrest for attempted murder, Tom. I tried to kill someone. I got arrested. I paid my debt and I have nothing to hide. So you mean your customers know about your sordid past? Yeah, why do you think this is the last pub open? I have nothing to hide, and I don't judge. That's a relief for many round here. Do you think prison changed you? Made you a better man? Oh, I don't know about that. All I brought back is bad memories, scars, <laughs> and an ugly tattoo of a blue turtle. But do you feel cleansed of your sins? All I know is that I'm at peace. I did what I did, but I wouldn't do it again. Does that make me a better man? I don't know. You attempted murder. Give me some details. I was given an order. An order to kill. I was an obedient gang member at the time. A proud, wet boot boy. Why did you join the gang? Because I finally felt useful. Do you have any idea what it means to feel respected when the rest of the world shits on you? So you were ordered to kill someone? What happened then? I don't know if you can possibly understand, but... I couldn't kill him. I just stood there, pointing my gun. Someone saw me. I gave up. Why couldn't you shoot? My target was eating in that fancy restaurant with mirrors and music. He was eating. Drinking, laughing. He was having such a good time. I hated him for his bottomless appetite, an easy life of easy pickings. And then something happened. You refused to kill him because you wanted to feel some of that happiness yourself. You empathized with him. Exactly. The man was a bloody landlord who rented overpriced flats. A selfish bastard. But he made me smile. And I was no different from him. Why not leave town and start a new life after you got out of jail? I grew up in the East End. This is where my roots are. This is where I want to help others and die eventually. Do you think the docks will always be a hive of scum and villainy? As long as poverty and fear run the show, I don't see how it would change. Misery loves company, as they say. Don't you feel threatened, staying in such a violent and criminal neighborhood? I've made peace with my violent past, Dr. Reed. I may not be a pacifist, but I'm not angry anymore. Have you got any recent news on Sean Hampton's shelter? I've not seen him since he came back to the docks. <laughs> Rumor has it he's converted his flock to some sort of cult. That's unbelievable. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Times like these, a good drink's just as likely to cause a problem as to solve one. You still working at this hour? That's what I call dedication. Have you heard anything about Sean Hampton's shelter? Some customers said the sad saint had a vision, launched himself on a holy crusade. <laughs> Even Dyson Delaney joined up with him. It's more like a cult, if you ask me. Tell me, Sabrina, 
Do you really believe Tom has renounced his life of crime? He proves it to me every day he tells the truth. Tom Watts is a good man. One of the best. And you don't think he might fall back into his sordid ways? We can all do terrible things, Dr. Reed. And we never know what we're really capable of until it's too late. Were you aware of Tom's past incarceration? That's the first thing he told me when he offered me the job. He didn't want me hearing about his past from anyone else. Did it surprise you to find out about it? Not really. I was already aware of his reputation before I met him. That's why I came to the Turtle in the first place. Most people would have run away because of that. Not me. I thought a man like him could give me stability, you know? At least to some degree. And I wasn't mistaken. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Welcome back, Doctor. You attempt... Oh. Goodbye. It's locked, all right. You know, it would be nice to see each other outside the pub sometime. This situation won't last forever. After, we'll have plenty of time to plan the future. Good thing we haven't seen... Anything going to stop coming in every night? Pubs become right. Cool, don't you think? Don't forget to count each bullet you fire. <laughs> you told me that already. <laughs> nice shot. You learn quickly. Pointing an empty gun could be a fatal mistake. It's easier when I picture the bastard's face. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Why are you teaching your waitress how to use a pistol? Sabrina is a nice girl who's already faced a lot of problems in her life. She does not need another. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Still working at this hour. That's what I called. I know you've been learning to use a gun, Sabrina. What are you up to? I just want to feel safe when I go home at night. Guns are not toys and are certainly not to be handled when one is agitated. I don't care. Next time some drunk bastard tries to drag me into the yard, he'll be the one bleeding.
Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Welcome back, Doc. Goodbye, Miss. Perhaps I should shut the turquoise for a time. In my mind. A few clients. I should what just run as far no away. Dares go outside. I cannot enter. My guess is they will kill me by some vengeance. In the meantime, the boys are waiting for us. Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I work at the Pembroke Hospital. I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh, the Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. Disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburne. Stella Fishburne. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? I'm not sure the epidemic is what worries people most these days. It's locked, all right. Please don't stay too long, sir. So you have questions about the flu, then? Yes, among other things. Forgive my rudeness at the door. It's just my son doesn't like strangers coming in the house. How is life around here? Life has always been hard in the East End. But it's everywhere nowadays, isn't it? Do you think the increase in violence has anything to do with the epidemic? Don't know, but it's most likely linked to the gangs, if you ask me. Recently, it's like everyone has had to pick a side. Violence has always fed on poverty, don't you think? It's a cruel law of the human condition. And selfishness is their rotten fruit. These days, you can just die in the gutter and no one will bat an eye. The orphan that regards you as a mother, please tell me about him, Stella. You mean Rufus? I wish I could do even more for the poor boy. Most people are so selfish. But you're not. Years may have passed, but I haven't forgotten how it feels to go through days with nothing but an empty stomach. May I ask what you do for a living, Mrs. Fishburne? Since my husband died, I worked at the Dawson Rope Factory, but it closed before the war. I occasionally help at the night asylum in exchange for food.
Did your husband die in the war? Oh no. My Jack was a docker. He died when my Seymour was just a lad. The poor boy saw his dad slip and fall from that scaffolding. How do you pay the rent, then? My Seymour works at the docks, just like his dad. He's very attached to the house he grew up in. It's not always easy, but we get by all right. Do you have any news about Sean Hampton's shelter? I heard you can't go there anymore unless you share his faith. A bit queer, don't you think? Goodbye, Miss Fishbone. Take care of yourself. I can't remember the last time I had a good sleep. I've been nothing but glory. Good evening, sir. I'm amazed you made it back to the docks alone. Good for you. Well, I could say the same about you, young man. More to the point, who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. And I am Archer Woodbead. Please excuse my assertiveness. I often forget I'm just an old prune. Do you have any recent news on Sean Hampton's shelter? I read that given enough time, any intention, no matter how good, can rot and sour. If half the things I've heard about this place are true, that theory is soundly proven. What can you tell me about this part of town? People used to feel safe around here. They had the gangs protecting them. Now all they do is bicker and plot against one another. Missing the good old days, are you not? Trust me, son. The longer you live, the less meaning your existence will have. You need to remember the days you still had beliefs. And what about the gangs? Back in my day, people trusted the wet boot boys. We looked out for the docks and its families. Nowadays, they're just a bunch of greedy fuckers. You were a gang member? I was their leader for a time, believe it or not. Now these bastards act like I'm nothing. Not one of them. They owe me some damn respect. If you were such a respected figure, surely you have many interesting stories about this part of town. You bet I do, but make no mistake. I'm no rat, sir. Some secrets are best left buried. Do you still know anyone? From the old days, I mean. Most of them are dead. I still give Miss Gillingham salutations. She doesn't remember me. She did once like me. Boy, <laughs> She was a beauty back then. Who would you trust around here? The owner of the Turquoise Turtle's a decent fella. Tom's his name. Sean Hampton's all right, too. Don't particularly share his religious views. He's quite devout, if you catch my meaning. Any remarkable new faces around here? Nobody. Well, there's that boy Rufus the Curse. I like him, despite the reputation he's made since his parents died. Poor little bastard. 
I'm sure a district as colorful as the docks must have plenty of stories about strange visitors and creepy characters. So, you want me to talk about the sewer dog, don't you? If you don't mind. The sewer dog is a bitch. Appropriately named, an old woman dressed in rags. She has an elegance, though. Despite her ugliness, I saw her once. Scared the life out of me. Have you always been so bitter? It's not bitterness, it's poorly masked disgust. When everything turns to shit, we all have to eat a spoon or two. As a practitioner, I believe science will provide a new standard of welfare. It's just a matter of time. I'd like to believe you, Doctor. But recently, all science has been good for is mustard gas and machine guns. But what about social progress? What about women getting the right to vote? Things can change for the better. I've never voted, not once. And my wife, God rest her soul, she was too busy taking care of the kids to vote. Tell me everything you know about the Guard of Prewen. Andrew never told me what they do. I do know they're vigilantes with military training. Access to some impressive firepower. And what is your personal opinion about the Guard, then? This Guard of Prewen is just another gang preying on the young and naive. Preying on people like my boy. I know how it works. I invented it. Tell me about the Wet Boot Boys, Archer. I want to know more. We were there for the families and each other. It was us against the world. We were vicious, tough, even cruel. But we were united. You sound like you were some kind of radical union member. Yes, nowadays the communists and gangs squabble over pointless territory. Sounds stupid when you say it out loud. Why did your son really join the Guard of Prewen? If I believed in a higher power, I'd see this as punishment for my own sins. I deserve it for all the young men I enlisted back in the day. You don't believe in God, though, do you, Mr. Woodbead? So why did he join? Now I think about it. Andrew joined the Guard, not to defy me, but to follow in my footsteps. To make me proud. So your son has left you nothing to explain his actions? No letter or message? Not even a note. I'm a proud man, Dr. Reed. But I would kneel and pray if I thought it would give me my Andrew back. Goodbye, sir.
Informing London's inhabitants of the presence of vampires. What does that make me? A double or a triple agent? <laughs> 